chaos ruled okay in the classroom. As bravely the teacher walked in, the Nooligans ignored him. His voice was lost in the din. The theme for today is violence and homework will be set. I'm going to teach you a lesson, one that you'll never forget. He picked on a boy who was shouting and throttled him then and there and then garroted the girl behind him, the one with the grotty hair. Then sword in hand he hacked his way between the chattering rows. First come, first severed, he declared, fingers, feet or toes. He threw the sword at a latecomer. It struck with deadly aim, then pulling out a shotgun he continued with his game. The first blast cleared the back row were those who skive hang out. They collapsed like rubber dinghies when the plugs pulled out. Please may I live the room, sir? A trembling vandal inquired. Of course you may, said teacher, put the gun to his temple and fired. The head popped a head round the doorway to see why a din was being made, nodded understandingly, then tossed in a grenade. And when the ammo was well spent with blood on every chair, Silence shuffled forward with his hands up in the air. The teacher surveyed the carnage, the dying, and the dead. He waggled a finger severely. Now let that be a lesson. All right, good morning, grade nines. Uh, we'll move on to your next poem today. In the lesson, I hope you enjoyed the reading of the poem. Um, first thing to notice right at the top is we have a poem that raises the question, should there be capital punishment in schools? Now, unless you are, you know, a little bit uh, unaware of uh, the world around you, capital punishment refers to the death penalty. So what would the poet actually be talking about? I mean, he's using, depending on your perception here, it's either satire or parody. I'd say it is satire because the humor is quite dark. Okay, so this is satire. All right. And it's satirizing violence in schools. And in particular... Something your parents will probably tell you is the solution to all their problems with your behavior, corporate punishment. All right, so we'll come back to the point the poet is making at the end. But uh, obviously, right from the outset, you probably get the feeling that he's not really for corporate punishment. All right, this refers to a uh, probably a, a state school in England. And the probably in the 1960s, the poet did come from Liverpool as well, which is a fairly poor city at the time. And there were people who were quite worried about social um, decay at the time, how society was going backwards, and they were fearful that the whole world would collapse because people, kids were misbehaving. All right. Chaos ruled okay in the classroom. Now, this ruled okay used to be a slang term. You saw it everywhere. It was sort of like um, the, the, the slogan that, that guys that... Uh, uh, sort of like right graffiti used to use. Right, so chaos is in charge. It is a loud, noisy classroom. As bravely the teacher walked in. Now, there's a bit of irony there as well. Bravely. Isn't the teacher supposed to be in charge of the classroom? So you could ask yourself right here, um, what's wrong with the teacher? I know it is quite noisy in my class at times with Brombach and the boys, but um, yeah, the teacher's going to be in charge. The hooligans ignored him. His voice was lost in the din. Now, the term hooligan is probably also quite apparent at that period of time. You might know about English soccer hooligans. And it just implies an absolute disrespect or disdain for the law. So it's sort of like the, the worst of the worst in English society at the time. So his voice is lost in the din. So there's a tremendous noise. Okay, I'm just going to jump to rhyme scheme quickly. You'll notice that it's A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. So the second and fourth lines, for so the first four or five stanzas rhyme, and then it becomes the last two, you know, and so on and so forth, for the, the, the stanzas towards the end of the poem. The theme for today is violence, and homework will be set. I'm going to teach you a lesson, one that you'll never forget. Now, there's a bit of irony here, because the lesson he's teaching these kids is going to kill them. So I'm not really sure they can learn a lesson if they're not really there to, you know, not living anymore to, you know, abide or change the behavior. Okay, nothing really going on in those in those lines. It's, it's, you will notice that there is the um, inverted commas. At the start, there's one missing at the end. We'll forgive Miss Wilson for, uh, for that mistake. 
And then moving on to stanza number three. He picked on a boy who was shouting and throttled him then and there. So we've got the TH, TH and TH. So there's alliteration in this line. Then garroted the girl behind him. The one with the grotty hair. So garrot, so we've got the G and the G. Again, alliteration. Now, garroting, for those of you that don't know, is strangling somebody with something like a piece of wire. That's quite sharp. Often garroting results in almost like cutting someone's head off. So it's a very, very violent way to deal with a girl who um, is angry with her because her hair's grotty. You know, it implies that her hair's dirty. <laughs> okay, so a couple of words we probably need to check out. Um, we have throttled, so that would be strangling someone from the front. Then garroted, so she's got her back turned to the teacher perhaps. And he strangled her with a piece of wire. Okay, and why is he strangled her with a piece of wire? Because her hair is dirty. It's a little bit excessive, you might say. All right. Then sword in hand, he hacked his way between the chattering rows. Okay, so the chattering rows are the rows of children that are talking. First come, first severed. So there's a pun. Okay, so instead of saying first come, first served, he said first come, first severed. And severed, obviously, meaning to cut off. Verse 7, he declared, fingers, feet, or toes. So this guy is slicing limbs off these poor children in his class. All right, moving forward. So we've got rows and toes. Here we have our rhyme again. It was there and here in the stanza before. He threw the sword at a latecomer. It struck with deadly aim. So a deadly aim implies it killed him outright. By the sword. Please may I leave the room, sir? A trembling vandal inquired. Of course you may, said the teacher, put the gun to his temple and fired. So leaving the room here becomes a bit of euphemism for death. The head popped her head around the doorway. So that would be the headmaster. And popped her head, so he stuck his head around the corner. So this is an example of what, guys? What you would this be? Simply a pun. Popped his head around the doorway to see why a din was being made. Nodded understandingly, then tossed in a grenade. So, you find the headmaster's in agreement. I'm right, so the degrees of violence is needed to control the children. And when the ammo was well spent, so ammo would be short for ammunition, with blood on every chair, silence shuffled forward with its hands up in the air. Okay, so silence sh shuffling forward here would be personification. And what's the, the meaning of this, uh, this uh, oral device? Is that the surviving children have now decided to keep quiet for the sake of maintaining their lives. The teacher surveyed the carnage, the dying and the dead. So carnage would be, you know, bits of blood and flesh, you know, the sort of what, whatever's left after a battle. Underline carnage there. The dying and the dead. He waggle, waggled a finger severely. Now let that be a lesson, he said. So this ends in a bit of an anticlimax. But I think the poet's made his point. I think if, you, if you're looking for a, for a message uh, throughout the poem, is that violence is not acceptable in schools. Okay. So I feel that that's a, it's not the hardest, um, hardest poem. I've left out the, there is one example of assonance in this poem. I'm going to leave that for you guys to find, and we can discuss that in the next feedback session. But yeah, not, not very much going on here. This is quite amusing, but quite dark. So I'm going to write dark here next to the lesson. This is a fairly dark poem. Um, we decided it's satire, not parody, because of the dark nature of it. Um, and the entire point is how of the poem is how corporal punishment is unnecessary in schools. Just remember, capital punishment is a death penalty. So obviously, 
you need to know have or be aware of that distinction between capital punishment and corporal punishment. All right, so I'll just uh, slowly go up here through the through the poem. I will add a fairly high definition uh, JPEG of the poem uh, to the video. But yeah, I think you have everything you need to answer the questions. It's a fairly good, uh, fairly nice, humorous uh, poem. Not, that, not too much going on. And probably the easiest one you'll do this term. Thank you, gents. Uh, good luck for the questions.